So, like I said, so we'll use this website for this peer instruction that we were talking about earlier. So these will be used for some conceptual questions that we'll go through throughout the course of the lecture. Um, so you can use your mobile device, um, you can actually use it using an old style device by text message. Um, there's no need to register, when you go to the site it might ask you if you want to, you can do if you want. Um, <coughs> questions should pop up when I activate them, so there won't be any questions there at the moment. So when we come to one of these conceptual questions, I'll go on the website I've logged into, activate them and it should pop up on your devices and you should get some um, choices of answers. Uh, so like I said, the questions will focus on conceptual understanding and avoid calculations. Okay, <coughs> so I'll just write that website down. Okay, so before we get going, I'll just go over the learning objectives for this section. So, for this first lecture, um, you should be able to get an uh, understanding of the basic principles of electric current, um, be able to understand and apply Kirchhoff's current law. Um, understand the concepts of voltage, resistance and resistivity, understand and apply Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's voltage law, and this will be the main part I think of this lecture, so um, we'll build up to being able to do quite complex involved questions on um, circuit networks, so we'll be using these Kirchhoff's laws that we investigate here and use them to find currents in circuit networks. So that's a relatively difficult problem that we'll build up to throughout the course of this lecture. Um, so like I said, there's also a section on digital electronics. Um, so you might be wondering why in a physics course is there some um, stuff on digital electronics. So most physics experiments require some sort of digital control. So as we train you to be independent physicists, being able to understand and um, fabricate and uh, program digital electronics is incredibly important. Um, so any particular physics experiment will have a lot of potential digital control systems and digital electronics will give you an edge over other physics graduates in the jobs market. Okay, so as we look at electricity, we'll start off at the very fundamentals. So. I think the most fundamental thing we can look at is current. So you may well be familiar with it, but we're going to go <coughs> over this again. So current is defined as charge flow rate. So in electricity, we've got this quantity that we call charge. And In, in most, well, in all electric circuits, this charge is electrons. And we define charge as a certain number of electrons. 
and then the current is the flow rate of this charge. So it's how much unit charge per unit time is flowing through wherever we're measuring the current. So, for example, in a battery, we short circuit it, then we will have an electric current flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So this is showing the direction of movement of electrons. And it has units of amps and amps as more fundamental units of coulombs per second. So coulomb is a quantity of charge, so it's a particular number, a very big number, so 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So again, it's one of these incredibly big numbers that you often come across in physics that's very <coughs> difficult to get your head around. Um, so one coulomb is an incredibly large number of electrons. And then one amp, simply one coulomb per second. Um, so what I often do in this lecture is use the water analogy for electricity and electric circuits. And the more I think about it, the more useful I think this analogy is. There's some instances where it doesn't really explain well what happens in electrical circuits, but for many concepts it's actually a really good analogy. So if, we've, if we take the water analogy of this system where we've got a battery that's connected with a wire that causes a current to flow, if we the water analogy and um, instead of a battery we've got a pump so this is something that can push water around so in this analogy the electrons are the water and the pump has the ability to create a flow of water and in our analogy this flow is an electric current um, and this pump could drive some device here so it could um, dissipate some energy and something can be driven around by the flow of this water and here we would measure the flow of the water typically would be say litres per second which is analogous to our current of coulombs per second So that's now our basic concept of current. So we'll look now at the first Kirchhoff law. So the first Kirchhoff law is <coughs> the current law. And the current law applies to nodes. So a node is simply where we've got a branching. So in an electrical circuit where there is more than one choice of where current can flow. So it's not necessarily um, having two choices, it can be two or any number more than that. That would constitute a node. And <coughs> Kirchhoff's current law simply states that the total current flowing towards a node is equal to <coughs> the total current flowing away from a node. So I hope that this is self-evident. So here is our node. We've got uh, one wire coming into the node, two wires coming out. So what we have flowing in is, for example, here, 15 amps. <coughs> what comes out must equal what goes in. So we've got 5 amps and 10 amps. So again, for our water analogy, if we 
have a water pipe that then has a branching. <coughs> so this is our node. So there's more than one choice of directions for the water to take. Then whatever flow rate goes in must come out. So if you have 15 litres per second going in, we must have 15 litres per second coming out. So by convention, we say that the current is positive if it flows into a node and negative if it flows away from a node. So really I should have put a minus sign here. So this should be minus 5 amps and minus 10 amps. form our convention when we build equations using this current law. So um, when we're building equations these minus signs will be very important um, and essentially tell us which direction the current is going and we're going to need to know that especially when we look at these circuit networks. Um, there's also another convention uh, when it comes to current as well, um, known as conventional current. So we've got this convention here where we're saying current flowing into a node is positive and negative when it <coughs> flows out. But what we actually call the positive current direction by convention is the direction a positively charged particle will move. So we know that in electrical circuits, it's electrons that are actually flowing, but by convention, we say that the positive direction of current is the direction that a positively charged particle will move. So of course, electrons have a negative charge. <coughs> um, this is actually of little consequence because opposite charges flowing in opposite directions are equivalent for almost all purposes of electronics. So saying that we've got an electrical circuit with positive particles flowing that way is equivalent to saying we've got an electrical circuit with negatively charged particles flowing in the opposite direction. So for most intents and purposes it doesn't actually matter. Let's uh, try our first question on that poll everywhere site. So and if you're on the website. should now be able to select an answer to this question. So if we consider this Y-shaped tube here, <coughs> now <coughs> this is full of balls and suppose that we stuff two balls every second into this opening at A. So the number of balls per second that come out of tube B will be that A always equal to 2, B always larger than or equal to 2, C equal to 1, or D depends what happens at C.
just got everybody. So, I think everyone is answered is going to answer. Why it's got on there? Okay, so I'll show you the results of what we got. So, we've got almost everybody answering C. So, no, so everyone answering D. So, he's right. So it's what depends what happens at C. So um, what we get out here, <coughs> we've got a certain rate of balls going in here. What comes out depends what happens at C. Okay, so the way that was an introductory question and then the way I work this here instruction is that if if I think enough people haven't got the concept, then we will do this discussion phase and then, um, then we'll re-examine the question. <coughs> okay. So, let's try this second question then. So, current is flowing through wires which are part of the circuit as shown. What is the current in the wire at the bottom right? <coughs> okay, so I've activated that question now, so you should be able to select an answer. Right, so I think this one's pretty clear. So just everybody chose D, one amp to the right. So if we got two amps coming down here, one amp comes down here, we must have one amp flowing in this direction. So we have one amp to the right. Okay. So, next question. So, in this electrical circuit network, if one amp passes through R1, it's not very clear, this, this is R1, <coughs> what current passes through R2? That's this one. So, one amp is passing through this resistor. What current flows through that resistor? So, is it A, zero amps, B, one amp, C, a little more than one amp. D, a little less than one amp. So have a think about that. Right, 
activated that one. Okay, so it's fairly clear what most people are answering. So I thought this one might pose a bit of difficulty, but clearly not. <coughs> um, so everybody chose B, which is one amp, which is what we'd expect. So if we've got one amp flowing through this resistor, there's no branching anywhere in the circuit between that resistor and that resistor. So there's one amp going through here, we must have one amp going through this one. So between any nodes, the current must be the same. So between there, all the way through there, to this node must be the same current. From there to there must be the same current. And from here, around here, must be the same current. Okay, you guys are too good for this peer instruction at the moment. Okay, right, let's look at our next concept then, which is voltage. So, I think voltage is a bit more of an abstract concept than current, a little bit more difficult to get your head round. Um, I think it's useful to think about the different names for voltage. So electric current is really only called current, but voltage has got a lot of different names, which I think are helpful in understanding what it actually is. So it's also called potential difference, electromotive force, bias, or electrical pressure. So they're, they're some of the different terms you might come across for voltage. And really each of them um, is a good short explanation of what it actually is. So yes, voltage can be thought of as a potential difference. So it's, it's some difference between one point in an electrical circuit and another point. Um, and it's potential in the sense that uh, nothing is necessarily happening. So if you've got a battery with two terminals, that can be completely static. There's, there's no charge flow, no energy conversion. Um, so the difference that we have between the two terminals is just a potential <coughs> for something to happen. So potential difference is a really nice word for voltage. Um, Electromotive force is also really good because another way of thinking about voltage is um, the force at which electrons are pushed through an electrical circuit. So we can have a circuit that will end up with a particular flow rate of electrons, but if you, can, if you imagine how hard they're being pushed around that circuit is a good way to think about voltage. Um, also uh, bias, another good way of thinking about it. So like, uh, I guess bias got some negative connotations, but it's favoring one thing over another. So one terminal is favored over another. So we can get some flow from one terminal to another. Uh, again, electrical pressure. So 
this comes back to the water analogy, really. So if we think of electrons as a flow of water, then the pressure of that water is analogous to the voltage. So strictly speaking, voltage is defined as the work done to move a unit charge from one point to another point. So we're now talking about energy here. So um, in electrical circuits, for the circuit to be active, for it to actually do anything, we need some energy conversion. So again, if the circuit isn't connected up, if it's not doing anything, then we have the potential for it to do that. Um, and we define that potential as the work done to move the unit charge. So that unit charge, similarly to our definition of current, is a coulomb. And what is different to our definition of current is that our current can uh, represent what happens at one single point in the circuit. So we can choose any point in the circuit and say there's a particular flow rate of electrons at this point. Whereas voltage only has meaning between two points. So you can't pick one point and say there's a voltage here. It only has meaning between two different points. Um, having said that, you might hear me, you might hear me say um, later on in the lecture the voltage here is 5 volts, but that's implying there's a difference to a common voltage in the circuit. <coughs> and its units are volts. <coughs> or in more fundamental units, joules per coulomb. So just coming back to our definition of the work done to move a unit charge. So this is our work done, our energy that we measure in joules, and then this is our unit charge, coulombs. So we have joules per coulomb. And then if we come back to our water analogy, um, it's really good to think of it as um, water pressure. So if we've got a water circuit, <coughs> the pressure of the water in that circuit is a really nice analogy to the voltage in an electrical circuit. Um, so we can also think of it as the, the head of water. So um, this is the same as the pressure. So what kind of what height of water we have in an electrical circuit. Okay, so let's try another conceptual question based on voltage. So, if we think about this circuit, we've got a flashlight with two one and a half volt batteries, and then this is a bulb, this is the circuit uh, symbol for a bulb, and this is our switch. The switch is open at the moment. So the bulb here has A, 1.5 volts across it and glows, B, 3 volts across it and glows, C, 3 volts across it and is dark, 0 volts across it and is dark, or E, 0 volts across it and glows. So just activate the next question. So you should be able to choose an answer to that.
Okay, so that's very clear. So you guys already know all these concepts pretty well. So in this <coughs> situation, the bulb, because this isn't connected up, there's going to be zero volts across it. And of course, <coughs> it's going to be dark as well. So, we've now looked briefly at current and voltage, so the next concept we'll look at is resistance. So again we'll come back to our water analogy, so think again to our um, water flow circuit where <coughs> you've got a pump that's pumping water around a circuit and if you imagine what's happening to the water flowing in the pipe, so the pump is going to pressurise that water and cause it to flow. So initially it's going to accelerate. So the force of that pump will accelerate the water through the circuit, but it's not going to keep accelerating forever. So the water will speed up um, but it's going to reach a steady state velocity when the force pushing it from the pump balances the friction force of the water flowing through the pipe. And this makes quite a nice analogy for the flow of electrons in an electrical circuit. So if we apply a voltage, potential difference, to our conductor, then this sets up an electric field. So between <coughs> two different voltages you have an electric field. So this is what causes electrical charge to flow. So we imagine in the conductor we've got this electron gas, so it's like this cloud of electrons that are free to move inside our electrical conductor and when we apply this bias it creates a force on these charges, these electrons, and they will want to move in a particular direction, so if we apply a bias like this, so a positive charge on this side, electrons are going to want to flow in this direction. Um, and this electric field, like the um, pump in our water circuit, will cause these electrons to accelerate. But they're not going to keep on accelerating forever. So <coughs> as they pass through the conductor, they're going to bump into the atoms in the crystal lattice that make up that conductor. So it's not going to follow a straight path. It will be uh, a path for lots and lots of collisions. And it's these collisions which eventually give us this steady state velocity. So we've got the acceleration from the potential difference which accelerates the charges and then eventually they will reach a particular steady state velocity because of the resistance to that acceleration from them bumping into the different atoms in the lattice. So to get resistance we divide how hard we push the electron gas so that's the voltage, so this voltage we apply is telling us how hard these electrons are being pushed to go through the conductor and we divide that by how much flow we get, which is the current. So our resistance is voltage divided by current. 
So this isn't, um, <coughs> this law isn't fundamental law. So this is an empirical law. So it was defined by experiment. So um, it, wasn't, it wasn't derived from the first principles of electrons. It was derived from people measuring what happened uh, in electrical conductors. Okay, so that's <coughs> a basic introduction to this concept of resistance. So this is a really important concept in electricity. So this impedance to the flow of electrons. Um, so let's have another conceptual question then now on <coughs> resistance. <coughs> So, get an idea of your conceptual understanding of resistance. So, here we've got a 1 ohm resistor that's placed in parallel with a 10,000 ohm resistor, as shown. So, 1 ohm resistor here, 10,000 ohm resistor here. The total resistance of these two resistance resistors in parallel is A, a little less than 1 ohm, B, a little more than 1 ohm, C, 5,000 ohms, D, a little less than 10,000 ohms, E, a little more than 10,000 ohms. So, if I think about that, and I will activate the question on the Poll Everywhere site. So that should be activated now. fairly even split between the answers on this one. Just out of interest, do you guys have another lecture to go to after this? Okay. Um, oh, that's a shame. This would be a really good one to do the peer instruction. Well, we'll have to do that next week, I guess. Uh, okay, so we'll carry on with this question next week then. Did you not get the answer?